Welcome to the 2018 Tech Tactics East in Easton, Pennsylvania. We're here in Porsche's Distribution and Training Center. And one of the great things about coming to Tech Tactics in the middle of winter is you get to hear about all sorts of things that are coming out of Porsche, but PC also invites special guests. Today, we have Milan and Mate. They're here from Akrapovic, and they are here to show us some of the neat materials that they use in innovative exhaust systems. Now, if you guys would, just share with me a little bit about your first foray into an OEM in terms of creating an exhaust system. Uh, the biggest milestone, let's say, in automotive, uh, on an automotive side for sure, for the company would be when we started cooperation with Porsche. That was on a Project 997 GT2 back in 2006-2007 and uh, gave, us, uh, gave us actually the insight you know, of the procedures that they do in Porsche and we also stood up ourselves, we, we gathered our knowledge and uh, know-how and experience of course from the motorcycle segment and uh, just developed together with the cooperation of uh, Porsche obviously a perfect system and then from this system on you know we moved to the aftermarket um, and through our boosted our racing program um, but it all derived, let's say, from this, the biggest milestone, yeah. First, congratulations on that. That was back in 2007. And since then, you've continued on into the aftermarket to be able to bring that level of exhaust system to 991 owners and 997 owners, I believe. And, of course, other vehicles make some models. But I think what, for me, is very unique to what you all do is you all are the third largest buyer of titanium third largest buyer of titanium in the world, only behind, I believe, the aerospace industry and the military. Um, so that's a lot of titanium. So I believe you buy in flat rolls, and we'll, we'll show the exhaust here in a bit, but you start with flat rolls and you make these beautiful pieces. Um, how, does that, how does that happen? So this was the, you know, to using the titanium, this was the decision made uh, by the team, you know, uh, actually at the beginning of the existence of the Akrapo, which is like 25 years ago, that um, to work with titanium, uh, that this is the future, yes. Um, lightweight, durable, I mean, these were all uh, characteristics uh, that uh, exhaust system should have. First thing is we buy in, rows, uh, in flat sheets, yes, but it's not only normal titanium that we buy, but we have two suppliers that actually we developed with them already for last 20 years new generations of titanium materials, titanium alloys, as a matter of fact, yes, in order to be more um, resistant to te high temperatures, uh, to be more formable and so on. So this enables us to, let's say, use our know-how uh, to produce from the flat material, you know, into the, into the tubing and then further on, you know, to reshape tubes into different forms. This is, I would say, the base that from the flat material that we, let's say, get from our suppliers, uh, that we put it, you know, into the tubing, you know, and then form it in a cold environment that doesn't affect, you know, in, the, in this area, you know, with this, uh, with this uh, uh, heat or something, you know, uh, that doesn't change the microstructure of the titanium itself. This is, I would say, the, the know-how and this is the beauty of uh, to create, let's say, perfect exhaust. So before we take a look at the beautiful GT3 system we have behind us, let's just take a quick look at just the materials themselves. Here we have, um, I can pretty much toss this to you about how light it is, uh, but the key is not, not just, you know, I think it's obvious that people know titanium is light, yep. but how you're able to, you know, put titanium into different angles and forms and this is uh, I believe this is mandrel bent so it's it's not easy to bend something where it maintains its internal diameter uh, throughout the bend but then also being able to make sure that inside the if I peek in here the smoothness of the bend and that has you know uh, influence on how it may sound or how the performance is um, here we have two pieces which look absolutely identical but I can tell you that one of the pieces is a stainless steel at 1.75 kilograms and one is titanium at one kilogram and it's a significant 
difference in, in weight. And so what that equates to is a lot of Porsche owners is, you know, weight to power uh, ratio. And so when you take off an exhaust system that might be completely stainless steel, replacing it with titanium, obviously uh, weight savings there. Um, other components here are the valves. Now I believe the systems that you create for Porsche sort of fits in and, and adapts to the car as much as an OEM system would, right? That's correct, yeah. This is our standard, this is our way of how we're doing. So, you know, um, this is what we learned from the OE uh, side. And this is a big, big uh, also added value for our customers, for our dealers throughout the world that are, you know, uh, installing the systems. And the first thing, first of all, Porsche, Porsche owners say, the first question that they ask is, What's the weight reduction? You know, this is the first thing. Uh, but when I ask the dealer network, when globally, you know, what they like about the Krapovic is perfect fit. So last, the last thing that I'll talk about is um, cast versus form. There's a big difference uh, in the use of that titanium, and why would you have two different types? Um, first of all, uh, today complexity of the systems is arising. You know, uh, you, you cannot compare exhaust systems today and let's say 10 years ago. So uh, to enable to get full potential out of the car in terms of performance, sound, weight reduction, we had to implement also new um, new ways of, or let's say new new technologies yes thanks uh, uh, into our processes this is you know now we may uh, we make also carbon fiber everything in-house we make casting of titanium that helps us to to create today the shapes that we were not able to create let's say year a couple of years ago and all if you put all these things together you get i guess the the results uh, that is proficient. speaking of complexity let's walk around this beautiful gt3 exhaust system and share with folks what we're looking at here. So unfortunately, most of this is hidden under the car when it's installed. Because um, when I say unfortunately is because you really get to enjoy how beautiful um, you know this is all assembled, the welds and how clean the finish. Um, one of, one of the things that I always wondered about is, you know, there's a lot of exhaust manufacturers out there. Um, I come from a Mustang background where, you know, the, the stock exhaust on my Mustang was fairly inadequate. And when I put on a aftermarket exhaust, it was fairly easy to make power because there was a lot of untapped potential. But when, you know, when we're talking about Porsches and the engineers at Vysok, you know, they've dialed in the efficiency of you know those motors to the max so one would think like you know they've squeezed the lemon so much how are you guys able to get that much more performance well, the sound is one thing and we'll talk about that in a bit but how are you able to extract that much more power from something that we thought was already dry you know mm -hmm. mm, if i if i may add yeah. the first maybe from commercial side <laughs> a little bit you know in Akrabovich every day uh, comes to work more than 1,200 people just to think about the exhaust, to breathe the exhaust, to create the exhaust. Uh, uh, Matei is R&D, you know, uh, we have more than 100 engineers only in R&D to develop today the level of exhaust uh, that you can uh, see here in front of us, you know. Matei yeah. can speak more. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, that's true, Milan. Uh, the thing is that, you know, normally we have really, we are working on a limit, let's say, but this answer would from my side would be that it's a combination of few elements few details that we are really taking care of first of all let's say legal wise we are always searching for this gap you know to be on the limit on the edge this gives us then the sharpness you know the exhaust or maybe the gap to to get it better in some areas right this is the first one for sure then the second one is that we normally do one part of the exhaust homologated right and the other one is let's say partially homologated or even if it's not we emphasize the features of it in a way to increase certain parameters so the third one for sure would be the technological side so we take care of all the details of manufacturing how it's assembled uh, what you mentioned before the mandrel the sensitive mandrel, mandrel bands you know done flawlessly welding of it assembling it together 
And on the other hand, you know, the biggest part for sure is our NVH, you know, NVH. Uh, for those that's noise, vibration and, and harshness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that means that our acoustic engineers and um, has have quite a lot of experience, right? We have quite a lot of experience and know-how in the engineering of the exhaust uh, in order to sound great and on the other hand to perform and good uh, to perform uh, better we put a really lot of effort into getting the right configuration so we developed also together with our uh, slovenian suppliers special um, let's say equipment that we can measure sound and we actually visualize it with the sound color maps that means that uh, when we do the certain configurations prototype wise we test them then we measure the sound and we visualize them and compare them. And in this way, we can also see, you know, how the certain prototype uh, evolves or how it performs. And then we can cho uh, choose uh, di different ones. And uh, we have quite a lot of experience for certain, let's say, uh, engine types and so on. And we go step by step. So it's, it's uh, let's say, first of all, for sure, we need to delete unwanted sounds, like you mentioned in drone or streaming. And on the other hand, emphasize what is good on certain engine, so certain frequencies and uh, at certain RPMs and so on. And this is the magic or the beauty of the work that we do. So this collector, again, hopefully you'll get a close-up shot of this. Um, back in the day, if, if you weren't able to cast it, if you were to weld and form this, um, it would, to me, I would think it would be extremely difficult, especially into these little internal creases and cracks here. Um, and, and, and also in terms of longevity and durability, casting it is going to give you the curves that you want and the consistency that you want time and time again. Actually, what we did uh, with early 997 GT3, this was not casted. This was, um, let's say, machine manufactured mm -hmm. out of raw uh, bands, right? Cut and then weld together. But obviously, when managing this technology, you have certain restrictions mm -hmm. with the design and then, you know, with, uh, with the construction and so on. So with this part, we say, okay, let's push it to another, to a higher level. And this the cast gives us actually the opportunity to, to design it in a way that it's much better also performance wise. So, okay, if you say durability, then this is one side because we also test, you know, we do certain tests to, let's say, guarantee durability. And on the other hand, with designing of this part, we guarantee that it gives the maximum performance. And maybe if I touch just the, the, what the thing that we were discussing before, the OEM fit, it's also because um, the way of managing the aftermarket project is very similar to OEM, like we said, and the base for everything like with OEM is the CID model. Mm. So even if we are working on the um, aftermarket project, we scan the car, we have really high-tech equipment, and scan the car and we transfer ourselves into the um, computer environment mm. and work there before even going into produc pr production of the prototypes. So derived from that, when we are satisfied with the configuration, when we say, okay, it's done, let's put it in the... Then you build a prototype and then you do further testing. Yes, but we also finalize the CID model. And this CID model, of course, is then the base for all the jigs and tools afterwards. Wow. So guarantees the guaranteeing this, uh, let's say, OEM fitting, right? The OEM fit, the yeah. consistency that exactly. we all expect. Yeah. You're, you're not just making exhaust for stock street driven cars. Tell me about your uh, experience with race cars. Yeah, for sure. We started, uh, that was back in 2007, we started with Manta Racing and that was uh, on the project GT3 RSR. Uh, that was quite a project. I mean, this was the first time that we used in the automotive segment, at least the material for so much time on so higher levels, so high temperatures. And it was a good cooperation. We designed the exhaust in different versions, let's say. We tested also uh, different versions. And in the end, the result was that this exhaust system uh, was capable of going on for 24 hours, full throttle. They, we won like three uh, titles, 24 hours of Nürburgring. And designing that exhaust together with the Porsche engineers was uh, really a, a great 
uh, job, a great, uh, let's collaboration. say, collaboration, exactly. And it also proven us that our materials, material is uh, capable of doing that. I can't think of a tougher test. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It had also the catalytic converter since integrated in the system. So it was uh, one of the kind, yeah, for sure. Well, again, coming to Tech Tactics, you get to meet gentlemen uh, such, such as these two uh, who live and breathe performance and, and Porsche. And uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, what you raced, what you designed with Porsche, is that's what you're applying to our streetcars because those of us live vicariously through these products and through your experience. And I thank you both for uh, being here with us today. Thank you.